love making this podcast and we would love to have it supported by a listener like you. So uh, go ahead, click the link in our show notes and join the awesome empire. Hello, everyone. Eric here. I'm going solo again today. You may be wondering why. I'm, I'm going to tell you. Allison's book, You're Already Awesome, comes out next Tuesday, August 16th. She has been running around like a crazy person from podcast interview to podcast interview. And I keep saying, babe, we got to do our podcast, babe. And she's like, oh, I'm so tired. She's been on all these podcasts. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go down and I'm going to throw up a podcast episode. Now, you're going to hear her voice because today she's going to be reading a snippet of, of her book, of her audiobook. So this is the actual recording. If you pre-ordered the audiobook or you listened to the audiobook, you are, you're going to get this. So this is actually her recording. I hope you enjoy this. Her book is incredible. It is, uh, it's so cool to watch her go through the process of it. It's, it's amazing that she really wrote the book you know, for the person who's hurting, the person who's struggling, the person who just needs to have that extra, you know, like love. But she wrote it for herself, and uh, she doesn't even know that I'm saying this, but it's really cool to see her go through, you know, trials and challenges and then be able to, to reflect and be like, you know, I've, I've gone through it, but I know I have a tool. I have something that, that, was, that I was inspired to write, and then she's using those. And that's, that's the miracle of this book and the miracle of art and, and creating things is... Sure, yes, we're making it for other people, but the actual creation of it, when it comes through you and, and it's inspired, it really is for yourself first. And so I'm just really proud of her. She's, she's powerful, amazing, incredible. I'm lucky to be married to her. With that said, I want you to, to hear this. Here's her 12-minute uh, excerpt from her book. I hope you enjoy it. Please pre-order it and enjoy it and let it sink in and uh, improve your life. I think it'll be... I think uh, the world's going to be a better place with this in it. Introduction. Feel awesome now. Hello, I'm Allison, and I'm really super excited you are here. I think the best way to introduce myself, which seems necessary because we're about to have a lengthy conversation in book form, is to do it the way I do it when I'm speaking to an audience that I've been hired to speak to which is something I regularly do. So let's set the scene. I want you to imagine a very average looking, and I do mean average, as in average height, average weight. I'm 100% serious. I'm the exact average in the U.S. White blonde white lady in her 30s in a pseudo-professional, but also very loud outfit. Imagine her, which is me, slowly climbing the stairs to a stage while air humping, thrusting, and maybe adding a bit of a spin to a song that will either make you immediately like me more or cause you to question if you should skip this thing entirely. Let's say James Brown's get up off of that thing. I will enthusiastically shimmy onto stage, take a moment to catch my breath, and then tell a brief anecdote that will connect us. For example, in this case, I might say, isn't starting a new book exciting? I know I love starting a new book. I always hope it will do what I want it to do. And then I do a sort of transition and say, so it's awesome we both like starting new books, but who am I, right? Why did anyone hire me to speak to you? Then I whip out the big guns and show you my first slide. It has an illustration of my head wearing large sunglasses. This tells you a lot. It tells you this woman has commissioned and paid someone to illustrate her face. She seems to like sunglasses. And then next to my animated floating head is the caption, I am not totally sane. I'm not entirely sure how most audiences respond to this, even though I've done it dozens of times. I'm not entirely sure because I'm personally so amused by it every single time, I don't notice if anyone else is. And before anyone has too much time to become uncomfortable, I follow it quickly with slide number two, which says, but I am awesome. And I believe you're awesome too. 
Okay, we're back in the book now, and here's what I mean by awesome. Yes, I was born in Southern California and have been accused of having a Valley Girl accent, but I don't mean awesome in a gum-popping, airbrushed-on-a-surfboard kind of way. I mean it in the way that you are full of awe. Awe being a quiet, reverent respect. And why are you full of awe? Why are you so insanely and inherently awesome? Because your existence in every single moment is a phenomenon, a miracle. There is no other entity with your combination of experiences, genes, timing, relationships, ideas, and awareness. You are a creation of infinite potential and growth. That is awesome. Come on! That is awesome. You can literally choose to think anything. Like, try it. Think anything. Say it in your head. That is crazy. Who is doing that? How does that happen? You didn't even have to try. You just knew how to do it. And who, by the way, is doing it? It can't be your mind, your brain, because then who is observing it? Who observed you saying anything? What part of you is that? Gary Zukov calls it the seat of the soul. I like that one. Some call it spirit. Quantum physics calls it energy. Pantheism calls it nature. The current spiritual movement mostly calls it universe. Many call it God. Michael Singer, who often asks people in his books and lectures to say hello over and over in their mind, says, There is nothing more important to true growth than realizing that you are not the voice of the mind. You are the one who hears it. So you are the one who hears the voice. Listen, we don't have to be rocket scientists to feel it, that we are not the voice of the mind. We are the one who hears it. And that one is without form and so freaking limitless. And that is the real you. And you are awesome. So maybe you're thinking, cute, Allison, you seem really excited about me being a miracle and limitless, and I might even want to agree with some of these ideas, but why does it matter? Here's why it matters to me. Because no matter how it manifests in your life, most of us, most of the time, are operating from a lie. It's the same lie that continues to compound our suffering, no matter how we feel it, what words we use to describe it or what we feel caused it. And the lie is this. Our value is measured by the value we create and the value that others give us. That we have to earn or prove our value. That we are not inherently worthy enough or even just okay. And in order to be okay, we need people, places, and things that are all outside of ourselves and most likely only gained through pain. This is a lie. Hustle culture, which I define as the idea that your worth and value lay outside yourself and that you must constantly be bettering yourself and striving to be more, is so predominant, so sneakily oozing from underneath almost every message we hear that we have the word hustle embroidered on pillows at big box craft stores. You've got your ribbon, yarn, fake florals, and decorative throws encouraging their target demographic of 50-year-old women to hustle for their worth. And we don't bat an eye at it. I used to live in all-consuming, sheer panic and anxiety that there was something more I could be doing and should be doing at all times. And I was pretty sure that whatever I was doing I was doing it wrong or it didn't feel like it was supposed to feel. I used to operate from a place of certainty that my best would never be enough. It could never be enough. And that despite sincerely giving a whole effort each day, I would always somehow come up short. I used to scurry around taking action from a place of thinking that to be good, which was of the utmost importance to me, I had to allow anyone who needed anything from me my energy, my joy, my skill, to take it. I believe this because I'm incredibly blessed, privileged, and have a lot of good things in my life. And I believed that if I didn't do this, I was being selfish. 
Living like this for so many years taught my body how to suppress almost any emotion other than anxiety, panic, and fear. I learned early on that from a place of anxiety, I could get a lot done. And getting lots done made me feel good and valuable. Adrenaline fueled my body and I could work for hours and hours with no sleep, completely blocking out any physical needs, ignoring pains and urges, except the one for Diet Coke. The craziest part about all this is I used to think this meant that I was doing a good job because I wasn't thinking about myself. I was working and doing and serving. But in reality, it was completely selfish Because all this tired, frantic, painful action was stemming from a place of wanting to control how others perceived me. And not just how others perceived me, but really how I perceived myself. How do I know this? Because I felt exhausted and drained. You can live in service and do great things without feeling so drained. But that's not what I was doing. Mind you, I did all this and operated this way, all while moving nicely through the world. I married a wonderful man, had three children, created and ran my own businesses. It's not like I was miserable every hour of every day. I was very happy a lot. It's not like I was pretending the joy, passion, enthusiasm, love, hope, and faith I also felt. All those beliefs. That panic, that anxiety, it coexisted with a very lovely life, but it also just about killed me. I just about killed myself, and I really do mean that. On many occasions, I have shared that I feel like I should die, or rather not be allowed to live, when I fall short of what I decide my best is. Ceasing to exist pops up as a viable option in my mind when I fail or make a mistake. This might sound severe to you, but it's my reality. And at those few times I have been brave enough to share it, people close to me, doctors, nurses, family, they laugh in my face. They actually laugh. Out of nervousness, out of disbelief, it hurts. It really hurts. It made me think my pain was a joke. And I used to laugh too to make others feel comfortable. I laugh to make it seem smaller or less serious. I don't anymore. Living and believing this lie truly almost cost me my life, and I know I'm not alone. But I have good news. I no longer believe the lie that I'm inherently wrong, flawed, need correction, or have to live my life in a way to prove and be perceived as good. I no longer feel it in my bones, my skin, my body. Well, that's not entirely true. I often still feel it, but I know it's a lie. I recognize it before I internalize it. I can see the lie as it pops its beady little head up over and over in my mind, whack-a-mole style. I also no longer operate from it. I know the truth is this. I am awesome. And if I am awesome, everyone else is too. In fact, I now see it's inhumane to believe that I am unworthy or less than another person. Because if I believe it to be true for myself, I have to apply it to those around me. And then what am I doing? Ranking and ordering divine creatures? How dare I? The state of the country, the world, and the annals of history have shown us the devastating effects of ranking and valuing one life over another. So here's what I want to do. I want to explore how we can feel awesome now rather than just crappy I'm going to talk to you about what feel awesome now really means and share with you how I do it using my experiences, which is all I have, the things I've learned that help me and the experiences of thousands of people I've shared these ideas with, coached and learned this with along the way. 
I hope you enjoyed that snippet. She's amazing. You're amazing. Only you can be you, and you're already as awesome as you need to be. And I'm going to take you out on a new song, a new collection from my stock music library. It's called, uh, the collection is called Lo-Fi Chill Hop, and I'm scrolling through choosing which one we're going to do. Let's do, I did a song, and Ginger named it, and she actually named it after herself, my oldest daughter. So this song is called Ginger. I hope you enjoy it. Have a beautiful day. (laughs) 